Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So, I was going to do a little test here, and uh, I figured I'd bring the camera along and uh, bring you guys along with me here if you want to see. So, I've mentioned it before in other videos, but I've had this theory that in the summertime, if the driveway was hot enough, I could use the snowmelt running in reverse basically with the primary loop pump off to preheat the incoming water that comes in from the street uh, right now you know my my incoming water temperature showing 55 degrees um, take that back it's more like 60 uh, it's more like 55, 57 pounds. So a little over 60 degrees. Looking at this bottom needle is uh, degrees Fahrenheit. Now, the water hasn't run in a while. I, I mean, we've been home today, but uh, I don't think there's been a large draw. So it might come in colder than that. This is what's been sitting in the pipes for a few hours. But uh, anyway, right now it's 82 degrees outside. Uh, it's May 21st. 2021 and uh, it's been I would say partly cloudy uh, the, the sun is off and on but most of the sun is on the driveway right now so what I wanted to do was just for fun here I am going to turn off the primary loop pump so I'm going to turn this off so what that will do is prevent this pump from turning on and firing the heaters because that would be pointless. But what I am going to do is turn the snow melt on. And what that's going to do is cir start circulating the glycol coming from the driveway across the heat exchanger and back out to the driveway to pick up more heat. So basically, if that makes sense, I'm kind of, like I said, running the system in reverse. Normally, the glycol in the snowmelt loop would be picking up heat from the heat exchanger because the heaters would be providing the heat in the primary loop. So the secondary loop, which is the glycol in the snowmelt, would be pulling heat from the heat exchanger and dumping it into the driveway. I want to see if that'll work in reverse. So if you followed my one of my mechanical room diagrams or, or videos, um, any cold water that comes into the system comes in down here and it goes one of two ways. It either goes into the tank and out to the the hot tap or it goes up and through the tank pump and into the loop here before the heat exchanger then it would come out through the loop get heated come out nice and hot go into the tank so essentially if you've got 50 degree, you know, 60 degree water coming in and that cold water is, is entering, you know, say you have a hot tap on upstairs, that hot water is going to go, come from the tank, right? So any hot faucet that's open or hot tap in the house pulls from the tank it's got to be replaced with incoming cold water. So it will all go into there until the temperature of the tank drops below 120. Uh, I think it's 125. I think I have it set at right now. It's, it's at 131 right now. Um, six degree differential. So when it drops below 125, uh, it will fire. So the question is, how warm can I get the glycol coming back from 
a driveway in the sun, I guess is the ultimate question, right? So to find out, I've disabled the primary pump. Let's turn on the snow melt. Okay, pumps on. Now I'm probably gonna have to bypass, cause this is just bypassing right now. I've gotta open this three-way valve. So I'll override that here. So that is now opening. We, can, we should still be able to good, get a good reading on the return here, what we're coming back at. It is climbing, and I can feel it. I mean, really, we probably didn't have to open the bypass because we could just see what we get here. How how hot is the water coming back from a 1600 square foot driveway that's sitting in the sun? That's the question, you know? That's what I'm trying to find out here. So far we're, we're going out at almost 90 and we're coming back at almost 90. Okay, so the valve is open so we should be flowing through the heat exchanger right now and that's correct we're at about 85 it's still rising a little bit we're up to 90 hmm okay So the only cost to do that, so basically what, what, I'm, what I'm doing here is preheating the incoming cold water with heated glycol from the driveway for free, essentially, which means that the, the tankless units don't have to heat that cold water from 60 degrees all the way up to 140. They only have to heat it from 90 to 140 okay so less BTUs and the only cost to doing that is the cost to run this pump so we're at 89 coming back that's based on the um, sensor for this aquastat which is right up in here so those, those sensors are up in the back on the return there so I mean yeah Looks like we can get about 90 degrees back on an 82 degree day, partly cloudy, driveway in the sun. We can get about 90 degrees coming back from coming back from the uh, driveway. Now the question is, will that help us? I'll have to sit down and really think about this because in order for that to really help, see we're dropping to 88. So I'm guessing as it's running, it's gonna look, you know, that, that initial 90 degrees is probably the, the hit of what was all that gl hot glycol that was stored in all those loops that have been baking in the sun since eight o'clock this morning. It's now almost 3.30 in the afternoon. Um, you know, once you get that circulating, that glycol is not going to be as hot anymore. So we're down to 88. Um, either way, the question is, if that doesn't come on until 125, and this is pumping 125 degree water, yeah, water into the heaters to bring it up to 140 to, to get that, uh, that aquastat to 131. It still won't, this won't work. Um, we're going to, the heat exchanger is going to be stealing heat from the primary loop and dumping it to the driveway because the driveway is colder than the tank. The only way this would work is if 
the return coming back from the driveway would be 130, 140, which I don't think it would get that hot. Um, that would be pretty hot. I mean, you'd have to have a surface temperature of, huh, I don't know. I mean, it would, it would have to be hot to get that warm coming back. But anyway, just a fun little thing I thought I would try. It's always been in the back of my mind since I designed this. I, I never designed it, you know, to do this specifically, but uh, I thought it would be neat if I could do that. Um, you know, the only other thing I could do, which I don't think I would, is I could shut the tank pump off that would let that tank get down to you know it, the tank would continue to drop as we used hot water but it would only I mean eventually it's going to get down to 90 degrees which isn't you know 90 degrees where if I had this pump on it would it would start to heat it with the driveway but that's too cold for most stuff I mean you know I don't know 90 degrees taking a shower might not be too um, refreshing and probably would want it hotter than that but uh, I mean it would work theoretically if I sh if I shut the pump and the aquastat for the tank off the tank pump and all of that down say in the summer and it would only have to be during the day because at night this isn't going to work because there's no heat to pull off the driveway at night and it would have to be a sunny day because I doubt on a cloudy day even with temperatures at you know the the low to mid 80s i don't think we're going to get glycol coming back that's uh that's 90 degrees so we're back up to 89 so it seems like 90 is kind of our magic number um yeah okay well you know i thought it would be fun to uh to try it to play around and just see you know i mean you never uh, this is fun to me i enjoy doing this stuff so and, and i figured why not bring the camera and bring you guys along and you know if it if it works awesome if it doesn't well that's okay too but uh in this case i don't think it's going to work i think we would need hotter return glycol coming back in order to really like in order to really um benefit or we would need to just shut the tank off and use specifically whatever we could get back as our hot water which i don't think is hot enough so and then you run the risk of uh, legionella and all that other stuff with the tank because you know low temperature is that low it can breed you know legion legionnaires or legionella disease and you don't want that that's why i keep it as hot as i do is to kill off all that so Anyway, uh, well, thanks for coming along. It was fun to, to try. Lee, hey, we exercised the pump here for uh, the first time in um, uh, probably a month. I think I had it on in, at the end of April for a little snowstorm that we had there, a little one-day thing, but uh, it hasn't been running a month. So, well, we ran the pump for a little bit here for, for a few minutes here. And uh, I got my answer. 90 degrees seems to be about what we can get. So anyway, I will uh, shut the snow melt off, which will close that valve. And we'll call it a fail, <laughs> I guess. I'll flip this back off. And you know what? It's... Uh, it's summertime, so I'll probably just leave that off. I don't need that primary loop pump um, running for anything over the summer. That's specifically just for the secondary loop stuff, which I don't want on. So, anyway, thanks for uh, thanks for watching and uh, coming along while I tried some stuff. I'll uh, I'll bring you along in the next one. Here's a shot of the driveway in the in the sun. Most of it's in the sun. Uh, there is a shady spot down there at the end and the back up here is also in the shade so and unfortunately that's always going to be in the shade just because this is the north side of the house so this is always shaded so I guess I'm really not getting the full 1600 square feet 
Um, earlier in the day when the sun is a little higher I do think it's it does kind of cut into this a little bit more but part of this is always in the shade so anyway yeah um, you know just thought I'd show you uh, the driveway itself here sitting in the sun I mean it feels it feels hot but uh, what I should do is grab the infrared heat gun here and see what it reads in fact I'll do that hang on all right, so let's see what this gun, I, I don't necessarily trust uh, this gun. Um, this has been hit or miss for me. This is a DeWalt DCT414. Um, it's okay, the better way I've found to do it is to put the, uh, the FLIR1 attachment on my phone and read it that way. That seems to be very accurate. But let's see what this says, just for fun. So I'm showing a surface temp of 112 and like I said it's it's partly cloudy it's not you know blue sky um, it's not totally sunny there's been spots where it hasn't been today but uh, this is pretty much reading pretty average Over here in the shade, we're only at 84, 83. And that's probably part of the problem. 82, 83 degrees over here in the shade. So, it could be part of my issue is that, I don't know if it's half, but a lot of the driveway's in the shade right now. And I don't know that I would ever be able to fix that. So anyway, uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, well, thanks for coming along to play. We'll see you next time.